This little box of tricks comes under the moniker Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom. Is it a phone? Is it a camera? Is it a photocopier? Well, it's big enough. But who cares? Well, not me for one. But by way of a backstory, I've had this camera for a while now. And like me, it's way past its sell-by date and a bit useless. And this, quite brilliant, Motorola Moto G. So I needed a new camera and my son wanted the phone. So to kill two pelicans with one boulder, I acquired this. So what does it do well? Well, but probably an easier question would be, what does it do adequately? Well, almost everything. Everything really, it makes calls, surfs webs. But more than that, this is a mobile that thinks it's a knicker mat. The phone is Android driven, so it does whatever an Android does, which is almost everything. This one is Jelly Bean, but there is a KitKat upgrade any day now, apparently. You can make calls where you can hear and be heard. You can text, email, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram your brains out. As long as you've had your shredded wheat, because this is one heavy little fecker, and after a while, your arm will ache. So, it's a bit lumpy, and it won't flatter your bottle. And you will be asked, is that a Galaxy S4 Zoom in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? So I took it abroad on a little road test to visit our cross-dressing cousins over the border for the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow and a general mosey about in Scotland. So, okay, okay, battery life. Simply put, it's woeful. I mean, what's the difference between the Galaxy S4 Zoom battery and a Mayfly? Well, one of them at least can last for the day. In fairness, I was using SatNav, YouTube and Twitter and I was taking pictures and video pretty much all of the time with the motorised lens banging in and out and the, the excellent Xenon flash audibly recharging like a drunken banshee, resulting in about four hours battery life. On the plus side, the battery is removable, so you could carry spares. The touchscreen is, at times, well, touchy. Sometimes it twitches and it glitches and randomly opens apps and removes icons, but most of the time it performs perfectly adequately. However, after two complete meltdowns requiring battery removal to restore the status quo, it is quite apparent that this little beast is a trifle underpowered. So is it any good as a camera? Well yes, it is, as long as you don't mind growing old as you wait for it to come on. I've got some nice pictures. The 10 times optical zoom is really useful, but jerky in operation. It's good for reframing, but not for smooth video zooms. The autofocus is fast and accurate, and the macro is pretty good too. The Xenon flash is excellent, but power hungry. And the dedicated shutter button here is nicely placed and weighted. You can stick up to 64 gig in here, giving you plenty of storage. So all in all, if you've got the patience to dig into the settings, it's a terrific little camera with a shed load of controls and effects. And if you want to just point and shoot, it does that pretty well too. And if you bung out this little bung here, you can bung it on a tripod or one of these. Useful for watching YouTube when you're having your tea. And be honest, who doesn't like a 10 times optical zoom? Here's a few more shots taken up north in Bonnie Scott. Yeah, that's nice, but what about the video? By all accounts, it's 1080p, 30fps, and loads of other incomprehensible numbers. But despite this, if you're not overly fussy, it takes pretty nice video. The sound quality is watching the spectrum. Could do better. And if you zoom while shooting a video, it lays a screech from the zoom motor on the soundtrack. There is an ability here that dips the sound when zooming, giving you two choices on your audio, dippy or screechy. There is a simple way around this, Bung in your headset and use this mic and wallop. Screech and dip free and with just as much dubious quality as the onboard mic. Annoyingly, when holding the camera, if your thumb sits here over the return button like mine does, a couple of unintended touches and it's good night camera. I mean, I'm not sure how you're supposed to hold it, let alone use the zoom wheel here at the front, which is unresponsive and well, a bit rubbish really. And if you try to use the volume rocker to zoom, it turns up the volume. That's really useful. So you are stuck with using the on-screen zoom icons, which I found twitchy, intimate, and badly placed. And through the constant fear of dropping the camera, the, sorry, the phone, the more observant among you will have noticed, I've been forced to give it a strap on. Hmm.
more bleed in bulk. But what does the video look like? Well, here's another little muriel, once again taken in the land of sporans and bagpipes. So yeah, Bonnie's Scotland and here's the fireman now. He's got a bucket of water. Yes, I'm loving this. Incidentally, it comes with a great little app called Watch On. And because the device has one of these, an IRB or infrared blaster, you can use it to control your telly, complete with a program guide. Marvellous. So there you have it, nutshelled. As a smartphone, it's perfectly competent. As a camera, it's not bad at all. And as a remote control for your telly, it's banging. True, it's a bit overweight and it gets funny looks in the street, but you'll love its quirky, flaky ways its lumps and bumps and occasional flashes of charming brilliance. It's a compact camera with a phone, not vice versa, so if you're serious about your tech, don't get this. On the other hand, if you like taking pictures and video and can maintain your sense of humour, get it. It will infuriate you on so many levels, but it will also be fun and make you smile. And there's not many dogs you can say that about.